Are you served up a daily dose of confusion because of all the tech speak and the jargon? Hi, my name's Wes Bryant, and in this edition of How to Get Started in IT, we've got some advice for you. If you've ever overheard geeks in the IT team discuss the morning adventures, then you've most likely noticed what sounds like an intelligent conversation, only to find a form of babble, exuding from what sounds like the ramblings of an over-caffeinated, deranged lunatic. Well, you wouldn't be wrong for the most part, maybe the deranged lunatic, but I'm convinced that techs in the IT world would fail to be able to have any conversation if not for the world of acronyms. Something like this. SATA, SCSI, Trump Kabobs, Trump Creole, PCI, SAS Pass, Lemon Shrimp, Coconut Shrimp, ATA, IAS, we'll leave that one alone. Shrimp Sandwich. That's, that's about it. Now, if you're watching this edition of How to Get Started in IT, and I can only imagine you are, and you're seeking the mystical wisdom that will rescue you from the lunacy of alphabet soup amidst the IT staff that you might be joining, well, sadly, there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. So, some advice for the newcomers to IT. Let's start with number one. There is nothing wrong with saying, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I don't know. I do it pretty much on a daily basis. For example, I'm very well versed in the ways of the IT geek speak, and I've come across acronyms in which I had, well, no clue what the heck I was being told. Take for instance, I had the pleasure of recording with Adam Gordon, some of the CISSP here at uh, IT Pro TV, and there are times when he'll mention an acronym that I actually have to time out here for a second and look to him and say, Adam, I really don't know what you're talking about. MAD is much less common. You don't often hear people refer to that. You hear people say MTD, that's the more common one. So we'll talk about that and then recovery time RTO and recovery point RPO objective. What? So remember that information technology has such a broad range of specialties that while not impossible, certainly can be challenging to keep every acronym's meaning under your belt. So my second piece of advice is to remember that if you want to be proficient in your knowledge of acronyms, what I would suggest, learn those acronyms that are directly related to your job role. It can be easy to fall off in a sea of tech terms and geek speak. However, the terms that help you and the team around you communicate on a daily basis, I feel that those are the ones that are most important. For instance, I was going, if I was going to go learn another language, right, personally, I'd want to start with some of the basic communication, right? What would help me have a conversation with a person next to me? Hola, como estas? Not advanced linguistics that I would almost never use. Me gusta pollo. So it's important. Learn those acronyms that are specific to the role and the task that you're performing that help you communicate amongst your team most efficiently. Now, one of my last piece of advice, I always caution the members that are watching us here at IT Pro TV about just rogue memorization. Remember, the person that knows the most acronyms at the end of the day doesn't win. All right, it's not as, a, uh, as beneficial as it would be if you were learning how to, not only the acronym, but how to apply those acronyms to the concepts that you're maybe learning or maybe to the concepts that involve the tasks on your job or your job role. So if I needed to learn, let's say, SAS or PCI, right? These just are some examples. Simply repeating the acronym doesn't really mean a lot. The meaning itself is not enough, but where those terms are applied is more career or is more crucial. So, for instance, you know, associating software as a service with a cloud service offering is more important than just hey, knowing that SaaS means software as a service. Something like PCI, it'd be interesting. It'd be more beneficial to know that that's the payment card industry with security standards that define the acceptable use of credit card transactions. That I find is far more beneficial than just knowing the acronym itself. So remember, while knowing the acronym does prove that you can have a conversation with your team and maybe win an IT computer trivial pursuit, it's not the end of the world if you say, what does that mean? Remember, it's okay to say, I don't know. Because if you say you know and you don't, you're held responsible for that. Cuatro bocadas abajo. The other thing too, learn the acronyms that are relative to, to your job role and the common tasks that you perform on a daily basis. And most important, you don't wanna just learn the acronyms for the sake of just regurgitating them, but you wanna be able to apply them 
Memorization is nice, but learning an acronym's applicability to the current task and the job role or the technologies becomes a valuable skill that you can take with you. What are some of the acronyms or maybe tips to learning acronyms that you use in your daily role? Leave us a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, if you've liked what you've seen here, don't only like, but subscribe to the IT Pro TV YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.